Hey folks, Paul Roberts here with Video Fishing Journal number 34. This one is going to look at how water levels affect fish behavior and our fishing. We're hitting this challenge because that's what was presented to me this fall uh, while I worked on a piece on bank fishing. This fall we happen to be experiencing a rather severe drought here, which offers us an opportunity to readily see the effects of water level drops. Um, and it's not all bad news. In fact, it can be just the opposite for all the predators involved, us anglers included. Now, even under normal conditions, water level drops are common by the end of summer uh, due to evaporation and the oftentimes spotty precipitation then. And water level changes in general have a strong effect on fish behavior. Fish of all types are highly sensitive to changes in water level uh, and respond rapidly to them. A few things are at work here that likely explain fish movements and activity during changes in water level. The first is a physiological limitation for many warm water fish species, um, such as the sunfishes and in perches, uh, spiny rayed fishes that have a closed swim bladder, meaning these fish cannot adjust to depth changes very rapidly, as species with ducted bladders can, uh, species such as trout, pike, uh, shad, and, and the minnows. So, to maintain consistent buoyancy, bass and the other sunfishes prefer to stay at a consistent depth in spite of the water level changes around them. Secondly, the behaviors, uh, movements in particular, exhibited by fish in response to water level changes um, and, and those fish's hypersensitivity to such changes suggest that they are a deeply seated survival response, most likely a behavioral mechanism in place to avoid stranding. That is, fish getting left high and dry as water levels fall. Thus, as water levels fall, fish follow that water out. On the flip side, on rising water, fish often follow that water in. Water that floods dry land dissolves fresh nutrients into the water. And where that rising water inundates good cover, fishes of all sizes often move in to feed. Thus, many fishes, and especially largemouth bass, are known to follow high water well up onto flooded shorelines. So, there are strong selective pressures on fishes, uh, both dangers and rewards, associated with water level changes. Another factor that fall brings is the dieback and disintegration of aquatic vegetation, which we've addressed in a number of our fall uh, video fishing journals. The loss of dense vegetative cover exposes prey fishes to predators. Uh, and the addition of falling water levels, pulling prey fishes away from the protection of shorelines um, and, and out of that disintegrating cover, explains a good chunk of the fall feeding binge in many waters. Okay, these are pretty much standard circumstances in many waters in the fall. But as I said at the outset, this year has been quite a bit more severe in terms of water levels, leaving some of the ponds here greatly dewatered, which again isn't necessarily bad news. With this often comes the truly awesome potential for consolidated prey and predators, a, a recipe for carnage. Today's water body is another shallow, heavily vegetated, dishpan contoured gravel pit that's typical for the area. Uh, this one at about four and a half acres in size. Topographically, the great majority of the pond bottom is a, a shallow, expansive flat. The deepest part of the pond, um, some holes exist along one shoreline only. During this outing, the drought conditions found our pond down uh, two plus feet from its, its normal bankful condition, leaving the majority of the pond with less than three feet of water. 
uh, the deeper shoreline um, having pockets holding roughly five feet of water. This made things pretty obvious as to where the majority of the fish, especially the larger fish, should be now, consolidated along that deeper shoreline. And that's where I spent my time. Uh, and, and not a whole lot of it. <laughs> Considering the pond's layout, it shouldn't take too long to find those fish, provided I don't spook them uh, and I can position properly uh, being tied to the bank. Cover along that deeper shoreline consists of uh, clumps and mats of dead milfoil and coontail. But prominent hard cover that should be especially attractive to bass consisted of two cattail stands and a single prominent shoreline tree. And upon arriving, I spotted a group of bass just out from one of those cattail stands. Uh, uh, but they were exposed in open water at the outside edge, and, and I was forced to cast directly over them. And they melted away <laughs> after only one follow and, and a peck. I only had that one approach available to me due to the shoreline brush uh, around that stand, and, and that's, that's bank fishing. The second cattail stand, uh, also with only one angle of attack, gave me no signs of, of fish. The most obvious spot, however, was a mat of dead milfoil over a deep pocket out from a prominent shoreline tree, and it offered me a good angle of attack. That's one. Whoa, and it's a good fish. I might be undergone. Let's keep her up. Keep her up. <laughs> You're in there. You are. There you are. Very nice. Look at that dark water bass. Gold and copper, and we're mid October, and look at the belly on her. Look at that. Let me see if I can get her up where she can be seen and appreciated. There's that October belly. Yep. Right. Small mouth. You're still growing. Yeah, that's right. Bite on me. What do you got in there besides milfoil? Looks like milfoil. All right. All right. She's just about 16 inches. Here you go, honey. Yeah. So the depth is literally this this bank right here. And that fish was holding up high. Try for a second fish there. Fight the wind. Oh, there's a, there's a swirl. There was a swirl. Oh, there's one coming behind me. Got it. Another one came out of that bank. Oh, let me get the camera down. That's why I should have two cameras. The same exact location. Two more swirls and another catch. Oh, another beaut, another beautiful fish. Holy moly. Look at that belly. That is a healthy fish. Look 
Yeehaw. Nothing sticking out there. Definitely, definitely a gorgeous fish. All right. <laughs> That's why I bring a rag. There's a pot of them under there. We're gonna give it to him again. Come on, get off of there. Get off of there. There's one. Oh man, I got pounded in there again. Oh. Okay, I got the all the bass in the pond right here. Oh. Oh, try to get my hand out of the way. Another. Gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that golden green. Oh my. That is stunning. Look at that body condition. That's that autumn body condition. This fish is, they're all just about 16 inches, but it's darn heavy too. Come on. Oh, I'm through a tendon. I see I'm twisted through a tendon, Paul. Be careful. There it is. Oh, man. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What do we got in there? What do we got in there? Just a whole lot of vegetation. <laughs> All right, putting you back, honey. Putting you back, honey. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the pork is torn. So, we'll retrieve slowly. There he comes. Got him. That one came out from under the tree more. There's gonna be more fish under that tree. Uh, would you call this a carnage zone? No, I would just call this as their holding turf. A uh, nice, slightly different looking fish. What does that mean? That means the fish was not underneath the cover, but, um... Hi there! It's a nice bass! Cool. See that? Another fat one. This one's... Just in the 15... Just in the 15 inch range. And, oh, oh, there's a tail there. You're not going to be able to see it. Let me get the sun out. There's the sun. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. There is the tail of a bluegill. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, honey. There you go. Just the two tail tips of a bluegill sticking out. All right, I'm going to try one on the point again, see if there's anybody else out here. Okay, I might have got... There's one... Nope, there's another one under there. Oh. Oh. Come on out of there. One nice thing about the vegetation is they stop fighting then. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this
this is this these fish are warm too so the water's still warm in here <sighs> yep oh there's a crayf crayfish pinchers <laughs> let me see if I can there can you see that Okay, honey. There you go. Okay, I want to follow up here. This particular pond happens to be situated further from groundwater sources, uh, resulting in more severe water level drops uh, during dry years uh, than most other uh, local ponds experience here. I've actually seen this pond go nearly dry some years. And interestingly, this happened most recently only three years ago, in 2017. This is 2020 now, okay? <laughs> three years later. This means that those uh, quality-sized fish, those 15, 16 inches we caught um, on today's 2020 outing, almost certainly five to six-year-old fish, had obviously survived that previous more severe dewatering. Now, I've never seen this pond winter kill, something that can happen to small, shallow, uh, fertile waters when snow piles up uh, enough, uh, deep enough and long enough to block sunlight for photosynthesis, resulting in severe oxygen depletion um, as winter progresses. So our pond must have lucked out okay, during that 2017-2018 uh, winter. Uh, meaning, with the steep-sided, deeper shoreline being incident to the winter sun and also exposed to prevailing winds, uh, with no high banks or tall trees to block that wind, snow was not able to accumulate on the ice along that, that deep shoreline allowing sunlight in. Essentially that shoreline, by luck of circumstance, is a refuge. Okay, that was drought trip number one. Next time in Video Fishing Journal 35, we'll hit some other drought-stricken waters from shore uh, with different layouts. And no hard cover and therefore a tougher bite that required something special to break through. This something special is actually at work on nearly all strikes we anglers receive, whether we know it or not. The conditions we will be presented with in Video Fishing Journal 35 revealed the fact that lures simply do not represent prey to fish most of the time. Lures need to do something special to dupe fish most of the time.